Ever wondered why your mind doesn't wander off uncontrollably despite the constant barrage of stimuli around you? Let's dive into the fascinating mechanisms that keep our awareness in check. It's a bustling universe inside your head, a complex interplay of structures and chemicals, all working in concert to help you navigate the equally bustling universe outside. Think about it, you're walking down a busy street, cars honking, people talking, advertisements flashing, yet you can still focus on your destination or a conversation. How does your brain manage this incredible feat of filtering and focusing? This isn't just about willpower though, that plays a part. We're talking about sophisticated biological machinery honed over eons of evolution. We're going on a journey, a Star Talk-esque exploration, if you will, not into the cosmos, but into the equally wondrous space between your ears. We'll uncover the hidden forces, both internal and external, that sculpt your experience of reality moment by moment. From the command center in your prefrontal cortex, to the chemical messengers that fine-tune your alertness, we'll explore how these systems prevent your awareness from becoming a chaotic pinball machine. So buckle up, cosmic voyagers of the mind. We're about to explore the very essence of how you pay attention, how you stay on task, and how you make sense of the world. Understanding these mechanisms isn't just an academic exercise. It's about understanding ourselves, our capabilities, and perhaps even how to enhance them. We'll see how external pressures and internal regulators dance together, shaping that precious resource, your focus. Let's begin. All right, let's start at the top, literally and figuratively. I'm talking about your prefrontal cortex, or PFC. Think of it as the chief executive officer of your brain, sitting right behind your forehead. This remarkable region is the maestro of your mind, conducting the orchestra of your thoughts, decisions, and crucially for our discussion, your focus. It's where higher order thinking happens. When you decide to ignore that tempting notification on your phone and continue working on a challenging task, you have your PFC to thank. It's the part of you that says, hold on, this other thing's more important right now. It's constantly working, even when you're not consciously aware of its efforts to keep you goal-directed. Now, one of the PFC's most critical jobs in managing your awareness is something called executive control. This encompasses a suite of functions, but let's highlight a few. First, selective attention, the ability to zoom in on relevant information while filtering out the noise. Imagine a cosmic lens and your PFC is the one aiming and focusing it. Then there's cognitive control, which is your mental bouncer, inhibiting distracting thoughts or impulses. It helps you resist the siren call of that cat video when you should be listening to, well, me. And let's not forget working memory, the brain's temporary sticky note, holding information online so you can manipulate it and use it for the task at hand. Without this, coherent thought, let alone sustained focus, would be impossible. So your prefrontal cortex isn't just a passive observer, it's an active manager. It's constantly assessing the environment, both internal and external, and making decisions about where your mental resources should be allocated. It's what prevents your awareness from being hijacked by every fleeting stimulus. When external forces try to pull your attention in a million different directions, your PFC steps in, like a cosmic traffic controller, ensuring that your mental traffic flows smoothly towards your intended destination. It's the bedrock of your ability to concentrate and engage meaningfully with the world, a true marvel of neural engineering. Now let's delve deeper into the brain's dynamic duo of networks that manage where your attention is directed, the default mode network, DMN, and the task positive network, TPN. Think of these as two distinct yet interconnected states of mind. The DMN is your brain's idle mode, but it's far from inactive. It lights up when you're mind-wandering, daydreaming, reflecting on the past or imagining the future. It's your internal universe where self-referential thought and introspection take center stage. It's what's active when you're lost in thought, perhaps pondering the mysteries of the cosmos or just what to have for dinner. This network allows us to process experiences and integrate them into our understanding of ourselves and the world. On the flip side, we have the Task Positive Network, or TPN. As its name suggests, this network kicks into gear when you're focused on external tasks, solving a problem, engaging in a conversation, or, say, watching an educational video about the brain. It's all about interacting with the world outside your head, processing sensory information, and making decisions based on external stimuli. When the TPN is active, the DMN typically powers down, 
and vice versa. This seesaw relationship, this elegant toggling, is absolutely crucial. It's like having separate channels for internal reflection and external action, and the brain is constantly switching between them based on what's needed. This alternating activation between the DMN and TPN is fundamental to preventing a chaotic state of awareness. If both were fully active simultaneously, or if one completely dominated the other, our experience of reality would be vastly different, likely quite disorienting. Imagine trying to solve a complex math problem while simultaneously having a vivid daydream. Not very productive, right? The brain's ability to seamlessly switch between these networks ensures that we can effectively navigate both our inner mental landscapes and the demands of the external world. This dynamic interplay helps maintain a coherent stream of consciousness, allowing us to be both introspective beings and active participants in our environment. So we have the PFC as our CEO and the DMN and TPN as our internal and external focus modes. But what decides which network should be active or what specific piece of information deserves our precious attention? Enter the salience network. I like to think of this system as the brain's relevance detector or perhaps its chief spotlight operator. Its job is to constantly scan your internal and external environment for stimuli that are, well, salient. Meaning important, conspicuous or emotionally resonant. It's the network that makes you jump when you hear a sudden loud noise or makes your ears perk up when you hear your name across a crowded room. The salience network acts as a critical switching hub. When it detects something salient, it helps to disengage the currently active network, be it the DMN or TPN, and engage the network most appropriate for dealing with that new important stimulus. For example, if you're daydreaming and your phone rings with an urgent call, the salience network detects the ringtone's importance, helps quiet the DMN, and boots up the TPN so you can focus on the call. It's a dynamic filter, constantly prioritizing information and directing your cognitive resources to where they're needed most, preventing your awareness from being erratically pulled in every direction by less important stimuli. This network is crucial for efficient functioning. Without it, we might remain stuck in our internal thoughts while a critical external event unfolds, or we might be hyper-focused on a trivial external detail, missing an important internal cue like hunger or fatigue. The salience network ensures that our awareness is flexible and responsive. It helps us navigate a complex world by highlighting what truly matters in any given moment, preventing a chaotic free-for-all where every sight, sound and thought competes equally for our attention. It's the unsung hero that keeps our attentional spotlight pointed in the most behaviorally relevant direction, a true guardian against cognitive overload. Beyond the brain's structural networks, we have the subtle yet powerful influence of neurochemistry. Think of these as the mood lighting and sound mixing for the attentional show your brain is putting on. Two key players in this chemical orchestra are dopamine and norepinephrine. These neurotransmitters act as modulators, fine-tuning when your awareness should shift, when it should stay put, and how intensely you focus. Dopamine, often famously associated with pleasure and reward, plays a crucial role in motivation and goal-directed behavior. When you're working towards something you find rewarding, dopamine helps to lock in your focus, making you more resistant to distractions. Norepinephrine, on the other hand, is more about alertness and vigilance. It's part of the fight or flight system, but its day-to-day -day role is to keep you aroused and attentive to your surroundings, especially novel or significant stimuli. Think of it as the brain's natural stimulant, sharpening your senses and preparing you to respond. When norepinephrine levels are optimal, you feel alert and engaged too little, and you might feel sluggish and unfocused too much, and you can feel anxious and scattered. It works in concert with dopamine to ensure that your attention is not only directed but also sustained, particularly when a task requires vigilance over time, like driving on a long journey. Together, these neurochemicals, along with others, create a complex regulatory system. They influence the excitability of neurons in key attentional networks like the PFC and salience network, essentially adjusting the gain on your focus. They help determine the threshold for what captures your attention and how long you maintain it. So, 
When external forces are vying for your awareness, these internal chemical signals are helping your brain decide what's worth engaging with and what can be filtered out. It's a delicate biochemical ballet that ensures your focus is both flexible enough to adapt to new information and stable enough to see tasks through to completion. So far, we've explored the brain's built-in hardware and chemical software for managing awareness, but here's where things get even more interesting. We can actually train these systems. Just like you can train your muscles, you can train your mind. Cognitive habits developed over time play a significant role in how effectively you manage your focus. If you consistently practice concentrating on specific goals, you strengthen the neural pathways involved in sustained attention. This is where things like setting clear intentions, breaking down large tasks, and minimizing known distractions come into play. These are all behaviors that leverage and reinforce your brain's natural attentional machinery. One powerful way to cultivate this mental discipline is through practices like mindfulness and meditation. Now this isn't about emptying your mind as some misconceptions suggest. Rather, mindfulness is about paying attention to the present moment non-judgmentally. It involves noticing when your awareness shifts, when your mind starts to wander and gently bringing it back to your point of focus, be it your breath, a sound or a sensation. This act of noticing and redirecting is like doing a mental push-up for your attentional systems. It strengthens the muscles of the prefrontal cortex and enhances the efficiency of networks like the salience network in discerning what's truly important. By consciously engaging in these kinds of cognitive training, you're essentially conditioning your mind to better recognize and regulate its own states of awareness. You become more adept at noticing the pull of external distractions or the drift of internal mind wandering and more skilled at returning your focus to where you intend it to be. This doesn't mean you'll never get distracted. That's part of being human in a stimulus-rich universe but it does mean you can develop a greater capacity to stabilize your attention, to choose where your focus goes, and to remain anchored even when the seas of distraction get choppy. It's about empowering yourself by working with your brain's incredible design. So the next time you find yourself focused and steady amidst chaos, remember it's not just your willpower at play. It's a complex interplay of brain functions and habits working together to keep your awareness in check. From the executive decisions of your prefrontal cortex, the dynamic dance of the DMN and TPN, the spotlighting prowess of the salience network, to the subtle guidance of neurochemicals like dopamine and norepinephrine, your brain is a marvel of attentional engineering. These aren't just abstract concepts. They are the very systems that allow you to learn, to connect, to create and to navigate your world effectively. We've journeyed through the intricate landscapes of the mind, exploring how these internal mechanisms respond to and manage the ceaseless flow of external stimuli. And we've seen that this isn't a fixed system. Through conscious effort, through practices like mindfulness and the cultivation of good cognitive habits, we can actually enhance our ability to direct our most precious resource, our attention. Understanding this interplay gives us a deeper appreciation for the quiet miracle that is sustained focus and it empowers us to take a more active role in shaping our own cognitive experiences. The universe within our heads is just as vast and wondrous as the one outside. By continuing to explore it, to understand its workings, we not only satisfy our innate human curiosity but also gain practical insights into living more focused, intentional lives. The ability to direct your awareness is a fundamental human capacity and like any skill it can be honed. So keep exploring, keep learning and, as I always say, keep looking up both at the stars and within yourselves. The journey of discovery never truly ends.